At the University of Bath in the southwest of England, scientists are using the new state-of-the-art laboratory at the Nanotechnology Research Centre to develop new lighting technology based on light-emitting diodes. Known as solid-state lighting, researchers estimate that in the next 20 years, 90% of the world's lighting will be provided by this technology. Until recently, LEDs, light-emitting diodes, only produced red light. Recent research has allowed LEDs to emit high-quality green and blue light as well, so that the full spectrum can now be produced artificially. Conventional incandescent lighting emits yellowish light, but light produced by combined LEDs can be tuned closer to natural sunlight. In addition, LEDs last 20 times as long as ordinary light bulbs and can accommodate readily into any shape or form for lighting. Our research here is um, looking at some novel designs on the LEDs and trying to increase the efficacy of the LEDs, particularly the lumens per watts of the LEDs. And also, and we are trying to do is that uh, combining different LEDs on optical designs to creating kind of lightings using combination of different color LEDs to creating a very uh, sort of a close to the natural light kind of lightings. Those are the two tasks of working in the Bath University. A few miles down the road at the University of Bristol, research in nanotechnology is also being undertaken, with a team in physics collaborating with biologists. By understanding the way that insects hear sounds, this unusual team is making major advances in atomic force microscopy, the principal tool of nanotechnology. Nanoscience is the study of structures and properties at the nanometer scale. And the scale is uh, a millionth of a millimeter. Uh, and at this scale, the behavior of matter is different to that in the bulk form. And it's ad the advantages that this brings us and the new properties this brings us that uh, will be the future for nanotechnology. The atomic force microscope is used to obtain images at the atomic scale. Likened to an old-fashioned record player, it uses a cantilever system that houses a highly sensitive probe. Much like a stylus bumping around in the groove of a record, the probe moves across a specimen, mapping its contours at a molecular level by feeling the bumps. The result is a three-dimensional map of the specimen's surface. So what we're trying to do is, is characterize at this nanometer scale both the structure and its properties in order to uh, understand the, the science that's going on behind it. Um, when we understand what structures we have, we're also able, of course, to modify them in some way to create uh, structures of practical use. To be able to write at this scale means that we can perhaps create circuits uh, beyond the level that can be achieved at the moment by conventional uh, lithography silicon techniques. When examining delicate material, such as DNA, there is a risk that the probe might damage it. By collaborating with colleagues in the biology department, Professor Marr's research team have used the atomic force microscope to tap into the ways in which insects use their hearing systems to detect very faint vibrations. Understanding this is helping them devise more sensitive instruments for dealing with delicate biological materials. We actually borrow their tools to study our insects and in return understanding more about how biological systems have evolved to detect these tiny vibrations uh, inspires how technologists can actually devise better uh, instruments to detect these vibrations using, using possibly the molecular constructions that nature has come about uh, with to actually emulate these, these, uh, these structures and create better tools. The University of Bristol's new nanoscience centre, currently under construction and seen here in computer simulation, will bring together a range of scientific disciplines. Professor Miles sees such interdisciplinary collaboration as being essential to pushing forward the barriers of this exciting new science. The excitement that we've had by working with our biologists can be reproduced by bringing together chemists, engineers, mathematicians into the new centre and we will create new ideas, new directions and the whole process will, will occur at a much more rapid, rapid pace. So I think by applying our techniques across the wide range of uh, uh, materials and by understanding better, by working with mathematicians to understand uh, what's happening, we should, be, uh, we should make, create new directions. I mean, it's a very exciting time in terms of nanoscale science. We don't know which direction it's going to go. We've just started to open the door, and we're looking now at bringing new techniques to, to uh, apply in all sorts of, of fields.